Welcome back to 360 Sports Network. I'm Greg Teixeira. With me tonight is James Dotson and Alex DeLaverson. Uh, we're going to be discussing this evening the sudden departure of Todd Graham, head coach of the University of Pittsburgh Football Panthers. Gentlemen, how are you guys out here tonight? Well, all I can say is uh, what a shame it is the way Todd Graham left and the fact that he left at all after just one year as Pitt head, that Pitt head football coach. So uh, no one saw this coming. I get home today and just to find out to say that uh, it's been reported that Paul or um, Todd Graham took the position at Arizona State, and I was in complete and utter shock. Um, the thing is, I don't think anyone should be surprised. This was a coach who jumped from place to place. So my initial reaction, I and I still am a little shocked, uh, but I shouldn't be, and I don't think anyone else should be either. Yeah, very disappointing that after one year he leaves a program that he came in was so hyped up about bringing in this high-octane offense, filling up Heinz Field. He was so passionate and so dedicated, wanted to turn this university and get it back to its winning ways. And then after one six-and-six six year filled with t talking about how his players just don't know the offense, all of a sudden he bolts from Pitt to Arizona State. You know, in a one way, it is a blessing in disguise that he is leaving the University of Pittsburgh program. Uh, I've never been sold on Todd Graham. Uh, Todd Graham's high-octane offense uh, uh, basically imploded against Iowa. Uh, I really believe he has destroyed uh, Tino Sinceri's career as being a quarterback. Uh, he never developed at all, never was given the chance to develop. Um, this is a guy that I think did more harm than good to the University of Pittsburgh football program. And actually, I'm kind of glad that he's gone. But it shows me the type of caliber of an individual that he announces his departure from the Pitt football program via text message to his team. To me, they call me old-fashioned. But, you know, if you're going to uh, fire somebody or you're going to break up with somebody, you don't text that person. You meet with them face-to-face. -face. And to me, agree more. to me, this was classless, this was crass, and Arizona State is going to get what they deserve. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sure, All Trey, right, well, go I on. want to say Trey Anderson's Twitter post right now real quick. I take a nap for two hours and I wake up to find out my head coach is gone. That's just wrong on all regards. Well, I, here's the thing. I mean, it is a business. I mean, this happens all the time. Uh, but, I mean, it's just, it still is heartbreaking. You have a guy who comes in here talking about family and the pit way, and now at his Arizona State presser, his, his presser is the same exact speech as it was with Pitt. He replaced the pit way with the sun double way. He talked about high octane offense. It was the same exact speech. I guess when you bolt from place to place like this, I guess you kind of get used to giving this, that speech and you get kind of good at it. Uh, I mean, this whole thing is ridiculous. I was never that big a fan of Todd Graham, but I was going to give him the benefit, benefit of the doubt at least for a few more seasons. Uh, I thought he was going to leave, not after one year. Uh, as a Pitt fan and future student, this is utterly shocking, and I think the program has just taken about two steps backwards. There's something about this DBVA Compass Bowl, I'm telling you. Last year, the same exact situation. I think now, I wrote earlier in our Panther Chronicles blog post that they should deny the bowl visit. I think they should do everything um, that they can to get rid of um, going to this bowl game. Um, Keith Patterson's the interim head coach. It's just been reported he's going to join Todd Graham at Arizona State. So I don't know how he's going to be coaching that team, knowing his players knowing that he's um, going to join the old boss in um, Tempe. So, I mean, th this is ridiculous. This, Steve Pearson should be fired. He should be gone. But, no, he still was there at the press conference today talking about moving the pit program forward and how excited he was for the future. I think it's just about time people are going to start throwing in the towel. This is ridiculous. Now, my concern right now is this, gentlemen. Uh, this obviously has done tremendous amount of harm to the Pitt program. Where is, where is Pitt going to be with their recruits for next year? 
being that right now we are entering into recruitment season for next year. How are we going to be able to recruit players based upon this uh, shocking thing that's developed right now? Well, you can't recruit without coaches, but Alex uh, has gotten some good confirmation about one of the biggest recruits out there for Pitt. Well, yeah, it um, does appear that Russell Shell is going to remain a Panther. He tweeted that Pitt is a family and that Todd Graham is missing out on rebuilding a program on the rise. So uh, it definitely seems like Russell Shell is going to stay. And, of course, you know, nothing's for sure, even though he said it. You still got to wait and see this new head coach is going to be. But I would say it's 99% certain that Russell Shell is going to remain a Panther. As far as other main recruits such as Chad Wojtek uh, and all, all these other three or four-star recruits, I don't know. This is the second time. Actually, this is what, the third coaching change you had to do, go through in 12 months. I don't, this, is, this might be, this, this is not going to be repairable, at least for the near future. Um, keeping the class together is definitely going to be a challenge. There's not going to be any other top candidates that's going to want to come to Pitt and fix this mess. The only top candidates left, uh, will, like I said, aren't interested in Pitt, and I don't know if Pitt's really interested. The only guy... I would have thought of was Tom Bradley, and there's no chance in hell he is coming to Penn now after the Penn State situation. So I don't know who this next head coach is going to be. I have no clue. I've been doing some uh, thinking about all this, and one way I think to to uh, to patch the ship to keep it from sinking, so to speak, here is to get a big name coach to come in and t and take over the program, and especially trying to find somebody with a local Pittsburgh connection. Um, people that come to mind immediately, Mike Stoops, who uh, was uh, dismissed from the Arizona program uh, midway through the season. This was a guy that uh, uh, comes from a long coaching legacy uh, from Youngstown. He's a local guy. This is a guy that I believe could rebuild the Pitt program and also get the local recruits. I really and sincerely hope that E.J. Borghetti and Steve Peterson and everybody who's in the Pitt Athletic Department really takes into consideration Mike Stoops because he would be a, a, a perfect fit for the University of Pittsburgh. Another person who was just uh, this past week uh, dismissed from the Kansas City Chiefs, Todd Haley, would be a fantastic fit, especially uh, with a total number of uh, people from Pitt's offense and defense going into the pros. Uh, Todd Haley's uh, father was uh, director of player personnel for the Pittsburgh Steelers back in the 1980s. Uh, Todd Haley has some Pittsburgh connections. Uh, he would be, I think, a fantastic person uh, to coach uh, Penn at this particular time frame as well. So there's two names right there, two big-time names, which I think would actually draw people and help the recruitment for Pitt rather than uh, going after uh, – uh, some some uh, some no names are trying to bring somebody up, but uh, uh, are there any other names out there? People floating around that uh, Peterson might be seriously looking at. There are no assistants in house right now who look good. I mean, three of Graham's assistants, Calvin McGee, uh, Tony Dews, Tony Gibson, they all left to go and uh, take Rich Rod go under Rich Rodriguez, who took the place of Mike Stoops out in Arizona. So there was none there, and like you said, the current air room coach has already said that he's bolting along with uh, Todd Graham. So there's nobody from in-house that looks good. So you got to try to find, like you said, a big name, but I don't know if there's a big name out there that's going to want to come to a program that's had three coaches in the last 12 months. Well, I mean, exactly. I don't see why would anyone want this job. They have a, uh, an athletic director who – can't seem to fire the right coach, and then if he does, they can't seem to keep him. So, I mean, I, th I kind of agree with Greg. I'd like to see Stoops in here. They need a big name. They need a splashy hire, only because they need to put some life into this program. But I don't think any big, flashy um, top candidates are going to want to come here. Uh, um, so, honestly, it's, it's what I think will happen. What I think will happen, I think they'll get some mid-level name. I think it will be a, a coach on the rise, unfortunately. Again, uh, I'm thinking maybe uh, Mario Cristobal or someone along those lines, you know, FIU. Uh, it, it's gonna, it's not going to be a splashy hire. It's not going to be the sexy pick. Um, if it is, I'll be very, very shocked. But 
honestly, this is going to be a very, um, I hate to say it, but kind of boring coaching search. There's not really that many top candidates out there. Another candidate is um, the Ravens defensive back coach, Terrell Austin, who actually interviewed for the pitch job last year. So he might be mentioned a game. He has um, coached at Florida, University of Florida, for a while. So there's not that many candidates out there. And right now, I don't see any big, obvious favorites, to tell you the truth. So I don't know. I just don't know. Now, a couple people that we've named in the Penn State coaching search um, come to mind, like uh, Mike London or uh, or Greg Schiano. Um, do, anybody like that? Do you see as any possible chance? Either well, you? I thought Frank Signetti for a little bit. And I still think he has a good chance, but he was a uh, Juan Stead's offensive coordinator. And if they're running out of candidates, I would have no problem bringing him in as the head coach. Well, the problem is, I. Well, right. Steve Peterson doesn't want any trace of Wanstead at all. So he's the Rutgers offensive coordinator now. I, I think he wants to be the head coach. He would. I think he would want to be a head coach, even if it's that pit. But I just feel like uh, Peterson doesn't want any Wanstead ties. You know, Paul Rhodes at Iowa State was mentioned. Um, I don't think he'll come back just because he has so much, so much linkage to Dave Wanstead. So I just I feel like there's a reason to almost deny any top candidate that's out there. I had also heard Mark Whipple's name from the Cleveland Browns as a possible candidate as well. I actually have not heard much about him. Um, I've also actually heard some crazy uh, suggestions, such as uh, Jim Trussell, Tony, John, Tony Dungy. Um, I mean, I, I don't see any of the, either of those coaches coming in, that's for sure. I'd love to but, see um, uh, Mangino come in. However, uh, he has his own baggage that he's dealing with as well. But uh, yeah, you know, uh, at this point, I mean, they could get someone in there. You know, I mean, they could get someone who wins football games. Right, where Mangino, do I drop? Where do I drop off my resume? Really? I mean, uh, I think with our knowledge and depth of knowledge of football, both on the college and pro levels, I think the three of us can probably uh, do a, a credible job, and we'd probably do it for a quarter of the salary. Oh and we'd last, well, I, last longer than Todd Graham did. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what. Now that I think about it, there is one candidate that does make sense to me, and you guys might call me crazy, but Sal Sinceri, Tino Sinceri's father, has been known to be very interested in this job for quite some time. He interviewed for the job. Um, at least it was reported that um, he interviewed for the job. He is interested. He's at Alabama right now, now as a defensive coach. Um, I don't know if that's still going to make Tino Sinceri want to stay. You would assume so. But the uh, it's being thrown around here that the next coach has to be a pick guy who's not going to leave. Um, after, you know, three or four years or maybe even one year like Graham. So well, I, I could see someone like Sal Sinceri. Now, wait a minute, though. You're saying Sal Sinceri is a pit guy and he's going to stay for many years, yet uh, his son would be graduating in one year. Uh, well, I'm not, not saying, saying that, people... I'm not saying that that would happen, obviously, but, I mean, it's just something to keep in mind. Well, well no, I'm not saying he'd come to coach his son. I'm saying this is all a water. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, it's not right. about coaching your alma mater. You know what I mean? So he was, and he was interested in it last time. Why wouldn't he be interested in it this time? You know, there's also something about coaching your son too. Well, and there's a reason why uh, Tino Sinceri is not playing for Alabama as well. I mean, it's the level of talent that he displays. He's a, he he could be a great coach. He could be a he's a decent uh, moderate level quarterback, not a top shelf quarterback that uh, they have down in Alabama. But uh, he would never fit in at Alabama only because of level of talent. So that's why he's a pit. But uh, no, but I do like the South Sinceri name, uh, especially uh, coming back to Coach Pitt. I think uh, him or Frank Sinceri, either or, would uh, would work out very well. Yeah, I mean, guys, and I know these aren't the sexiest names I'm throwing out there, but the point I'm trying to make is that Pitt's not going to have many options left. They're going to have to get one of these mid-level coaches. I mean, Todd Graham at the time was a very good hire. It was a splash hire. At least it appeared that way. A winning coach up and coming won everywhere he went to. Um, that's not going to be the case with Pitt um, anymore. So I, 
I don't know, guys. This what is going to be rough. Would, what would hold back uh, Pitt from going after somebody like Mike Stoops? Nothing should hold him back, but it's the question of will the coach Public. reciprocate. Public relation, things like that. You know, they don't want anyone. Uh, they don't want anyone that's too media frenzied or things like that. Anyone with any baggage. Mike Haywood is out there. I'm just saying. So. Who? Mike Haywood. Yeah, he is out there. I mean, you know. <laughs> you know, he just got hired. What at Tulane? Oh, well, I guess we have seen a couple of uh, one year and leave. Or he hasn't even been there one year. So you know, why not? Uh, at this point, you know, in terms of pit football, left is right, right is left, red is blue, off is on. It's just, this is, uh, man, this is just the corrosion of all proportions. All right, let me let me throw out one other uh, one other name, uh, Larry Fedora, the head coach currently at Southern Mississippi. He's been there for four years. Actually, I take that back. It looks like he just got picked up by North Carolina. Yeah. Exactly. It's not like this happened right when the season's over. I mean, it's been what, like almost two weeks now. That's enough mm-hmm. time to, for most schools to pick up their coaches. So uh, this is a mess. The BBVA compass ball disaster, right? I guess so. No, we'll uh, we just gotta keep pushing forward and figure out who the next coach will be, and just hopefully, I'm not worried as much about recruits coming in. I'm worried about people already on the roster, especially all the running backs that Todd Graham brought with him, how many of those well, are still going to hang around. I, I think, you know, sincerity is going to leave no matter what, even if the pro-style coach comes in. Uh, so, sincerity ran two coaches out of town now, at least it appears that way. Juan Stead and uh, Graham, this is, if he's not a fit here, even if it is a pro-style offense, he's just been tormented here. Uh, Dave Wanstead stuck up for him, and Dave Wanstead took a lot of criticism for it. I mean, I still don't agree with Dave Wanstead going on the radio and bashing Todd Graham, but now he can go back on the radio and say everything he wants to. But Steve Peterson should have known this. There's a reason Haywood wasn't hired anywhere else. And Todd Graham, I mean, you guys, re- Steve Peterson really believed a guy that has six children with, what, three different wives, literally three different wives, wives. They, he expected him to preach about core values and being committed. He expected that guy, Steve Peterson, to be fired. But honestly, if he's not fired now and it doesn't appear that way, I don't know what it's going to take for him to be gone. I do not trust him making the next coaching hire. I don't think anyone does. It's going to take a Jerry Sandusky issue. And, and, uh, and honestly, Mike, the last three coaching hires, um, Bill Callahan in Nebraska, Haywood and Graham, He's three strikes are out, at least in my book. Well, he uh, Peterson did help the basketball program, though. Now, he was there when Ben Howland came on board, and then when Ben Howland left to go to UCLA, uh, he was part and parcel of uh, keeping Jimmy Dixon here. And Pitt basketball, to Peterson's credit, uh, is strong and it is thriving. So, uh, I would I, like to correct, I would actually like to correct you, Greg. Steve Peterson did not hire Jamie Dixon. Steve Peterson was at Nebraska. Pitt did not have an athletic director at the time. It was an interim athletic director that hired Jamie Dixon. As far as Steve Peterson bringing in, bringing in howling, if you go to the Post-Gazette, if you do your research, Steve Peterson did not pursue Jamie Dixon. One of his assistants who had, who had ties to basketball in Pittsburgh and around northern Arizona, where Steve Pearson had no ties to, suggested and brought Ben Allen to the University of Pittsburgh and brought him and recruited him in a way to be the next head coach. So Peterson, yeah, technically he was the guy overseeing things, but Steve Pearson did not go out and get Ben Allen. So and he didn't hey. sign Jamie Dixon either. Hey, well, that's the same thing why Joe Paterno has gotten credits for wins for the last 10 years. He's probably not running the team, but he's still the guy in charge. The name he's is the guy who gets team. credit. The name is still on the team. Yeah. Yep. Well, uh, so where do we go from here? Perhaps Pitt should uh, really start maybe reevaluating their athletic director position and uh, maybe go after uh, a big-time name for the AD. Hey, let's bring Wanstead in for the athletic director, right? Why not? What, I mean, he ran, what, the football program into the ground, apparently. 
So maybe we'll do the same thing with the actual whole athletic department. But the University of Pittsburgh, they fired with the last two head coaches that, um, besides Graham, Juan Stead and Walt Harris. The last two coaches that were fired won Big East championships, and they were fired. That's all you have to know. The only two coaches that did it for Penn history have been fired. Those are the kind of bozos running the athletic department. And that, until they uh, realize what they've done, they're going to keep hiring guys like Mike Haywood without a good background check, and you're going to hire guys like Todd Graham, who's going to bolt after one year of mediocrity when after saying his team doesn't know his offense. And I mean, he wants to be with his family. Yeah, his family. I'm sure, he, I'm sure he has family everywhere. But the thing that's disturbing, Todd Graham sent out feelers to this Texas A&M a week before he left today. So he's been looking for a new job for a while now. He's been sending out feelers. He's been telling his agent to go get him new jobs. He never wanted to really be a pit. He came for $10 million. It was apparent he was frustrated all year by this offense. He realized he wasn't going to win here. He wanted to go. He did not enjoy it here. He, he just, like in a way, just regretted coming here. He was not a pit guy. He didn't want to be here. So, good riddance. And, and on that extent, I think it's good for Pitt that he is gone. Well, stay tuned uh, to uh, for updates uh, as we as we uh, progress in the uh, Pitt search for the head coach, and uh, perhaps we'll be looking uh, for uh, possible AD uh, replacements as well. Uh, until then, I'm Greg Bashero. That's James Dodson. And Alex is out there on the pit beat with the Panther Lair. Um, Get your resumes ready, everybody. You never know who they'll call.